here we go just a little shot of uh just a shot of what, what what I've actually shown on Twitter. There's actually a lot more to this. So just zoom out. Uh, the idea of this is to uh, pretty much be like that old Uncle Sam uh, poster. You know, I want you for the, you know, for the for the U.S. Army, right? So I thought it would be kind of fun, you know, if it was just kind of one of those sorts of sorts of propaganda-ish posters, but with Die Hard Man. I'll just give you a couple uh just show you a little bit of the insides of it uh, so that's just my shading i did that like pretty not long ago this is just uh, my loose text um i want to put like you know a little you know uh bridges logo and a uca logo on the top on the bottom the reconnect the world um i gotta work on that because there's um, there's no official um text file you know text for the the font that's being used in death stranding so i just kind of you know eyed a lot of the text that i saw from the menus and that's what i'm going to eventually draw up later and then i have to also recreate all the text here you know because all of this stuff is just taken from the uncle sam image as well as draw some new, new borders these are also kind of taken from the uncle sam image and i'm just going to re work everything around it's just so that i had a, a general thumbnail as to what the thing was going to look like hello okay good just making sure my microphone's on um so here's here's a uh, heart uh, die hard man let me just turn off this this is uh die hard man's face um uh, i had actually if you saw my twitter i, I kind of had a little bit of issues of drawing him so i actually um you're drawing them with a mask on properly so what i did was i just sort of um you know just did a did a drawing of of a tommy earl jenkins uh, face and then essentially drew the die hard man mask on top of it so this is what it looks like without without this little thing there so um i am debating whether to um to to fully paint tommy's face at this point in time so it's probably it's just there for my reference so when i'm doing shadows and all kinds of stuff it, it, his face is there to kind of help me out but yeah you know because you know, sometimes it could be difficult to draw a mask a mask that properly fits over a person's face if you don't know exactly what the structure and how the mask fits so there's tommy's face and then we have uh, i can actually show you older versions of it again that's another version of his face there um and then like just alternate versions of the mask where i kind of solidified it and fixed it so it's hard to find the, like good reference for the mask and how it works um i initially during i take a lot of screenshots in the video game so when i'm playing it I, like especially in the first sequence i took a lot of photos of of a uh, of a uh, die hard man from different angles so that it could get an idea of what the shape is for his face and uh yeah all right next part of this i'm going to show you is you know, just so it just doesn't look weird is his um, body which i did two versions in this initial version i drew just so that i could you know so i knew what the pose was uh, another thing that was really difficult to find um reference for was the handcuff uh i have a couple of things that I, you know i took a bunch again i took a lot of screenshots of different close-ups and stuff from different characters because they all have the same handcuff anyway I think the the reference I used for this this shot is actually from a, 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 a picture I took of the Norman Reedus um, full scale like Simon Bridges um, you know, Sam Porter Bridges uh, thing. So uh, yeah, I took that and then I just kind of you know drew it from there. And then another version is just a little more refined version of the sketch, which is just this right here. And I got his 
the sign what I like to call the science officer bridges logo because Die Hard Man has both he has the classic bridges logo on his well it would be the right side if you're looking at it it'd be the left if it was it'd be his left shoulder and you know what you know one thing I did forget and it's probably his his uh, little um because he's got that little red white and blue stripe on his arm so probably would well I'm probably gonna do that in later but it probably would be like something like this up the side of the arm that and I'll just you know I'll just use this uh, as a reference for painting later really the sketch is just there so that I know what to paint and what not to paint and you know what things need to change so it's all gonna be it's gonna be all and gonna be underneath the um, the initial uh, you know all the paint that I'm gonna do the digital paint that I'm gonna do so I'm just gonna duplicate this layer okay and I usually like to keep um, my ver versions of the sketch sketches and stuff like that just so what I just have preserve it for prosperity and stuff uh, so we'll just enlarge that there we go and it'll probably change in later on, which is fine. Yep, there you go. So there you go. It's pretty much what's going to happen. Just make sure I save. And yeah, if you have any questions or comments and stuff like that, feel free to uh, feel free to ask me if you like. And uh, yeah, let's just get some music on here, and uh, we'll do some painting. Just pulling up some reference. Feel free to let me know if there's any, uh, if the music's too loud and it's hard to hear me because I kind of talk a little low. Uh, let's see. One other thing to, to it's hard to get, um, and this is just from normal, uh, from, because Death Stranding in general has a sort of, uh, color grading all over it and it's hard to find um, un, un, untinted versions of all the color work of, 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 of the characters and stuff like that so like if you notice that you know in this one this one piece of reference of Die Hard Man his he's got a bit of a, a bluer a little bit of a bluer tint on there that's because of the room 
each room and, and everything in, in Death Stranding in any game has a sort of color grading to kind of bring a little bit more of the, of the not the moment, but more of the thing in there. I would say that probably this would probably be a really close to what the actual color is of the of his suit. And uh, right now I'm just going to start mixing some colors and stuff like that. Kind of get it. And then also, you know, just for... Yeah, so from what I know, from what I think, his his uh, jacket is a bit of a, like a silver jacket, it looks like. His um, vest, his, um, you know, ascot or tie that looks like a velvet. Uh, yeah, something like a velvet or something like that, uh, or kind of a silk. Actually, no, not velvet, but silk. It probably is a silk material. Uh, the shoulder pads are kind of, you know, at least the shoulder work on here kind of looks like it might be a, a bit of a leather. So, all right, let's. Uh... So probably going to do a like a quick um, painting on top of this, and then after that I'm going to go in and start refining stuff. So yeah, uh, I got my chat open, so you guys can ask me any questions or anything you have, uh, any deep things. Why, hello there, Pac Dan. Just doing some rough, sort of rough painting here before I actually get started on this.
One thing I really like about this Uncle, like Uncle Sam piece is it's fairly simple the way it sort of works. It kind of um, has this, like, an, like this is a really great, um, at least the, the scan here that I have. It's actually a really good version of it. You can actually see a lot of this pencil lines and stuff like I really like that sort of stuff. It kind of shows the artist's hand inside of it. I'm going to do something similar. Granted, mine is going to be, you know, mine is not actual. Um, I think this guy's probably using water, uh, was using watercolor or uh, kind of gouache, it looks like. So yeah, again, it's just going to be a, it's a kind of a rough painting on here. As I remember, the second Bridges logo is a, kind of a cream color. Hmm.
Let's pull up another f screenshot. It's hard to see anything in a lot of these shots. Oh, ah, perfect. Hey, what's up? How's it going, guys? What's up, dude? The third P uh, P P Coke infusion. Oh, Pico Han. <laughs> So yeah, what we're doing today, what I'm doing today is actually I'm doing okay. Uh, I had a little bit of um, had a little bit of time today. Uh, I'm still I'm waiting for some some pages on my on my current comic project. Um, so I had a little bit of extra time, so I just figured I'd work on this and then obviously back to work when, uh, when everything's all ready to go. Uh, this is going to be my print for the, what's, um, C2E2. The idea is it's going to be, uh, Die Hard Man wants you for the UCA. Reconnect the world. I got the idea was like, you know, because he's in the game. He's constantly telling you, you know, Sam, you need to reconnect the world. You need to bring back America. And also saying all that sort of stuff. So I'm like, you know, it'd be kind of fun if he if in the in the world of Death Stranding, you saw a poster on the wall of Die Hard Man, you know, telling everybody reconnect the world. <laughs> Now, I am not playing, uh, the music I'm playing in this is not actually from Death Stranding, but it is by the composer of Death Stranding. Uh, Ludwig, Ludwig Fossil, or Luden, uh, what's the name? Um, Ludo, as they used to call him. And uh, this is actually from the Metal Gear Solid Five soundtrack. There's all these really cool, like, um, extra bits of soundtrack, uh, bits of music that he did, that he made for the game. Um, Die Hard Man also has this kind of like these little uh, chains uh, around his neck. I'm going to do those later. Thanks, man. Hmm. 
I was a uh, I was uh, on Twitter. I was actually giving little teasers as to uh, what I was going to be doing, and uh, I didn't want to you know start showing stuff before I even before I even did anything. So like I had a, I think I'll show you my some of my reference. Um, do I have my? Uh, let me go back. <laughs> it's a picture of my hand. So, Die Hard Man's hand is literally my hand. I redrew it and everything. I'm cheating a little bit. <laughs> Pulling some swatches from my from uh, my hand. See, Mike, when I did this, I didn't really want to do. Obviously, I don't want to do a tracing of it. My my piece is more of inspired by the original, so there's a lot of differences between the way I drew. You know, I didn't draw the exact hand. I didn't draw the exact pose. In fact, um, I have an alternate version of it. Let me turn off my paint. So there was a lot a alternate. The alternate version I had where it was the head was a little bit lower but I felt like it was a little bit too aggressive looking, you know, like in other words, like you, you know? So I decided like, I wanted to, you know, lift his head up to be like, you know, as opposed to kind of like a little, not as aggressive looking as the, as the sort of original one was. So if you look at uncle Sam here, he's a little more, he's a little more like, you know, but I want die hard man to be like a little bit, a little bit less than that. A little less intense. Also, um, the actor that plays uh, Die Hard Man, Tommy, is he's actually a lot like if you look at and look at Uncle Sam here, he's a little bit gaunt, like he's a little bit of a thinner guy. And um, so for Tommy, his his build is a lot. He's a lot bigger than, uh, you know, he's a lot more muscular looking than than um, than Uncle Sam. So I wanted to get that in there as well. So let me just go into the reference folder again. So I like to show you like for there's actually a really great reference of essentially like a like a kind of a light version of what Die Hard Man is wearing. Tommy actually posted a, a, a shot of a, essentially from one of the this, this one of the scan slash photo you know reference photos for the for the game model. Because what they, I guess, my guess is what they wanted to see is how the clothing um, fit, how a certain type of clothing would fit him. So I did. So it was actually really helpful to kind of get also a, a kind of a build shape of what, of what you know. Because again, we've never seen Die Hard Man actually pointing at somebody or in the in the game. At least at least as far as I know, have seen. So to kind of create that sort of. Um, to kind of create that sort of, uh, to, to you know, understanding how his his structure works, and then create a new pose that you know looks like it would be him doing it. But this this photo was really helpful to kind of get like, okay, how does his his wrink the wrinkles of his clothing work, and it's in a kind of a, a neutral color, just so you can see how lighting kind of hits it too. Granted. This jacket that he's got, I I don't exactly know what kind of jacket that is. Um, it looks like it's a suit jacket, but I don't remember. I don't think I've ever seen a suit jacket that's ever been that long. 
I'm under if this was a like normal at the store suit jacket, it'd probably end maybe around here. Because judging by where the pockets are. Yeah, something something like right there. So it's not a normal suit jacket that he's wearing. So yeah, you know, always good to take, you know, if you can't find the, find the, uh, find some, find good reference that you can't, that you need online, just take your own and draw from that. That's what I do. Again, yeah, like, you know, you look at the way Uncle Sam works here. He's like, he's got all kinds of really interesting, like, it's a very sort of, you know, quick and slapdash painting that they did, you know. Kind of capturing that a little bit, too. I even tried to capture the same sort of lighting in my shot. Granted, it's a little bit of a, a, a little bit of a cheat. Cause I had to, I kind of had to switch my hand around and like point at myself and do all that stuff. And try to get it right. And even after, once I'm done with this, I'm going to probably change it up a little bit, a little more. Save it.
<laughs> so yeah, feel free to ask any sort of questions you might have. Uh, you know. Probably gonna. One of the things I'm trying to get on this piece is a little bit of that sort of not like in other words something that you would have if you had like done it on a piece of paper where it kind of absorbs a little bit of it and it kind of loses its kind of vibrant colors especially when you're working on a brownish sort of paper and I kind of want that sort of feel a little messy. <coughs> Mm-hmm. 
so you get to see my little desktop there. All right, now I'm looking for specific. I have a bunch of reference on. <laughs> what are I looking for? Oh, uh, so, ha. Huh. Oh, let's close down a couple of refer a little things. Um, the program that I'm using has a little bit of a memory thing. So if you use too many too many larger images open, I'll close down on that. But this picture was taken at um, the Fractured Worlds, the Death Stranding thing. And uh, it's actually kind of a great reference because you get to see the handcuff under normal lighting as opposed to um, sort of a... And supposed to be being under grading, but even even then, this this lighting is also very um, sort of. And you get to see his arm, you know, with the way the the way this uh, this thing looks. Oh, it's interesting. Are all his? I might have did it wrong. Let's see. Seems like the outsider is always red. Yeah, okay. Not a big deal. And a bit of a deeper blue. I make sure I try to take as many like whenever these sorts of situations sort of show up I don't know what I'm going to need sometimes I haven't thought of the idea yet but a lot of times I just take any sort of reference just in case I'm um just in case that I want that I might think of doing something so back when I when this thing was happening the Death Stranding show and uh, stuff was that I, I didn't think I was going to be doing a Die Hard Man, but I did make sure I tried to get as much references that were sitting around in the room as possible. So are you, are you guys listening? Yeah, yeah, you guys can hear. Oh wait, are you? Oh, I am just talking to myself here. There's music. <laughs> I'm talking about the music and there is no music. What the hell? Sorry about that. Uh, I guess, um, let's see, let me make sure that it's at a decent level. All right. So it's not so loud. pretty cool
Hold on for a quick second. I'm gonna switch over to Photoshop real quick. couple of things I want to do here beforehand. I just like to save my work. And kind of condense a lot of this stuff down. Remember my line art being that light, but that'll fix it.
Just doing some quick flats. So I have my reference for my lighting because I kind of wanted something specific. And then we'll just turn this off, turn that off, put the painting back on, and then this face. Just that was weird. Oh, there we go. I just ran it into Photoshop really quick because sometimes it just it's just easier to use Photoshop. As far as the text, I'm going to put all that stuff in there, the you know, usual. Don't need this for now. It's not a good shot. better one which is this one this one you can get pretty close and see
going to go into more detail on this hair a little later. Uh, getting there. what you guys are up to uh, check the chat all right good stuff so yeah if you feel free to just ask any questions if you have them
fun thing about dark colors is that you know the what I'm trying to get is like I don't want pure um, black colors on this character. Kind of want more of a um, I want to say a kind of a it just reaches a sp specific level, and I just don't want that on this image. Like I don't want the the dark the darkest spots to be incredibly dark. I want them to be a little light, so it feels like it's on paper.
<laughs> kind of interesting seeing it without the just the eyes done up. That's okay, man. You, you didn't miss that much. I'm gonna be here for a while painting this one up. But I can show you what it looked like before. So this is how it started, pretty much. Um, all I'm doing now is in just sort of refining it. Mainly, I'm trying to make it look like you know one of those, just one of those old propaganda, you know, the old, uh, you know. We want, yeah, I want you, sort of thing. And uh, underneath the mask, actually, I drew Tommy's face, the actor who, who plays Die Hard Man. Uh, I did it because I, I couldn't. I was having trouble getting the mask to look right. So I just went in and paint, and went in and drew him. So yeah, right now I'm just like, I'm just doing like a rough sort of pass on it. And then after that, I'm going to come in and start painting over everything officially. I'm just trying to get my lighting, you know, my lighting pretty good. And try to get as much of it filled in. So I'm going to keep a little bit of my pencil drawings underneath everything to kind of help it. Because this piece, the original um, um, Uncle Sam image is also is a bit of a kind of a, you know, it was on watercolor and stuff like that. And I kind of want to get that feel. Watercolor or gouache. Thanks, man. I know a couple of guys um, on the previous, um, sort of on your questions were asking where the next drawdown draws was. I officially didn't know because it was really just based on what time I had. Uh, thankfully, you know, today I was uh, actually had a little bit extra time. I, I'm waiting for some 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 artwork for uh, the comic that I'm working on to come in. So I figured why not spend, you know, the tonight sort of uh, getting this squared away because I'm going to have it at um, uh, what's that show C2E2 this year I think the one thing I'm probably gonna have gonna find have to find an interesting solution to is the texture of his mask. Uh, it's gonna be interesting.
<laughs> really? Getting into drawing? Great. That's good to hear. Sometimes it can, it can be hard to find the time to, uh, to get a little hurt in. I'm actually using the lighting of this photo to sort of help uh, with the, uh, the lighting of this image. So if you notice like the in the, the in the center of it is you know the center is where the lighting is. Uh, you can see all the, the lighting over here is right there. It's kind of like centralized right, right around in this section. So kind of using that as a little bit of, of a help to kind of help with uh, my lighting as well. I also like that he's sort of backlit a little bit. You know, you, you, know, um, you know why a lot of times uh, they kind of... Um, why they backlight a lot of photos a little bit like the they, they light them on two sides there's two different co colored lights behind them they kind of define the shape of the person's face but it's also a really good help too here Oh yeah, he. This is actually his his headshot. Um, he had, I think he had it on a, his website when I, um, I think he recently updated it or something like that. And I, I pulled the, the pulled the headshot because again I needed really good. I needed reference for his face, which you can see right here. Let's turn off the. Let's see, turn off his color. So. What I did was I drew his face first, and then I actually drew the mask on top of that. See, so just to get it right, 
because I was just having a lot of issues just trying to get the mask to look good on his face. And then the the thing, the hand is actually not, it's not the Uncle Sam hand, it's actually my own hand. Uh, I showed it off earlier. I'll show you that. Let's uh, find it. Uh, so yeah, it's my own hand that I that I lit very similar to the Uncle Sam one. Because I didn't want it to. I, I didn't. I don't want. It, it's. I want it to be an homage and not just a um, just a you know not just a tracing. So I even colored it, even painted the the light properly on it so that it looked similar. I mean, had similar lighting uh, situation onto it. Yeah, I tend to take a lot of my own. I tend to like to, uh, to like to take a lot of my own reference shots. Just you know, you never know when you need a little help. But sometimes you know, if especially if you're making something original, you know, sometimes you just can't, you just can't get it right. So don't be afraid to take a quick shot of uh, you know some reference with your phone or something like that, and just do it that way. And even photos, so, you know, photos. It's just you know, we got. Nothing comes, you know, just knowing these, you don't, you don't always know these things on the top, off of the top of your head. So.
So yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm gonna be here for a while painting. So a lot of this is just kind of understanding, just trying to understand the shapes that you're you're working with. Lighting usually helps um, kind of different lighting situations which you really haven't something that you haven't done yet kind of help you sort of understand the shape that you're working with. See, especially like this right here, you know, all this stuff right here kind of helps help to define what the the figure what the what the what the shape is. And again I also tried to take as many shots as I could so that I could portray it properly. Seems like I have a lot, a lot of music from um, Snatcher in here. <laughs> There we go. I was having some issues. how the picture is going to look.
Gonna do some color adjustments. <laughs> When's the next book? Oh, the next book is um, like which book? Like my own art book, or more the um, the uh, the comic that I'm working on? exactly know when uh when i'm gonna be able to to do a new book it depends on what what ideas i have and i really don't have anything new as of yet i haven't had much time to think of anything i do have a couple of ideas but um they're not solid One thing about <laughs> not working with actual paint is you can do quick things like this. <laughs> Huh? 
Want to go what? Go outside. Outside? Yeah. I'm streaming. Well, I didn't know you were streaming before. How am I streaming, Justin? But what I can do is I can break for now and uh, come back again in a bit. How's that sound? Because I think I need a walk. Yeah, they, oh, they shrunk them. These are smaller. Yeah, they actually shrunk the books down. <laughs> no, it's not a show about underwear. <laughs> Alrighty. So right now, I'm just, uh, again, continuing to... Uh, let me just lower the volume ever so slightly so you guys can hear me a little bit better. Alright. Yep, so what I'm doing right now is just blocking in a lot of my... Uh, a lot of my just a lot of my lighting and stuff like that this is what it looked like before this is just now still have a little bit to go but uh, I've initially initially have what I want what I'm looking for and uh, just for just for those of you who haven't seen the underpainting of this the underdrawing like when I originally did this, I couldn't, I was having trouble drawing him with the mask on. So I actually drew him, I actually drew him with, uh, drew, drew Tommy Earl Jenkins, um, face underneath the mask so that I can put it on there. And then once that, there you go. Look at that. Still has a li little bit to go. I'm just, um, again, I just want to get it right how many years I've been an artist probably most of my life actually I've uh, been drawing since I was a child since I was young uh, a professional artist I've been working for uh, it's looking like it's getting close to 20 years now you know I actually started my my first job was in um, was actually in high school. I was designing characters for a for a lawyer who wanted to uh, make a whole show, and that was my first like first job. I uh... in fact I talked a little bit about it on my Twitter. Um, it was so I was it was so early. It was like 1998, and. Um, I didn't even have a bank account then. Tony actually, if you're, you know, Tony actually had a had a bank account, and 
they wanted to pay me via check. And so they, you know, obviously because it's a lawyer, you think, okay, hey, yeah, it's going to be, should be okay, you know. But no, the check bounced and it cost Tony uh, money. <laughs> and then they decided to pay him, pay me off with, um, uh, what was it? They decided to pay me with, uh, what is it? Uh, to pay me with cash. But I had to go through that silliness <laughs> first. Yeah. Right now, I mean, if you were here earlier in the stream, I, um, the other, the other part of this stream, you might have noticed I was using a program, a different program. Um, I was mostly using Psy, but uh, I really want to get this sort of um, blocking in kind of done already, so that I can actually start rendering fully. See, I have a lot, a lot of brushes. Somebody's got to ask Kojima what's with whales. He seems to like whales. Oh, did they make an announcement of, about this PS5? <laughs> you sure it wasn't that Overwatch thing? Or that somebody was trolling with that not long ago?
Oh, they made a, a, a thing that, I mean, who knows? Uh, they said there was supposed to be something coming really soon, so. So what I usually do for these sorts of things is I try to um, 
work around the whole piece as opposed to just concentrating on one spot. So let's pull open some reference. Just opening up a little more reference here. <laughs> Thank you. 
What? <laughs> Why not uh, crop his head, then use uh, use filter to make it black and white, and then add uh, add the mask to it? That doesn't doesn't make any sense. If you if you notice, he's not drawn in the same perspective as any of these images. He's slightly looking down under his eyebrows as opposed to looking straight. And I wouldn't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to trace a photo. My user, <laughs> that's not me. To be honest, you don't learn anything from tracing photos. Okay.
Buka. Hey, you. No. <laughs> no? No. Someone making noises. I'm, I'm smashing my keyboard. No. Not really. I'm just playing the video game. What game are you playing? Playing that game that was re that was Japanese game, but it got repackaged as an as a American game with Yoshi in it. With what? With Yoshi in it. It's called Tetris Attack. Oh. I'm playing that, and that's why I'm smashing on my keyboard. Oh. You taking a little break? Yeah, I need it. Ah! God. You messed up. I'm fucking up. I'm fucking up horribly. I don't play this game enough. <clears throat> <laughs> What's up, Mr. Jimenez?
doing my thing here. Painting some Die Hard Man. <laughs> That's good to hear. You're hanging out, doing your thing. Good stuff. I mean, most of this stuff is just sort of technique stuff I'm um, doing, really. That's how I sort of render things. Not using Photoshop, by the way. I'm actually using another program called Paint Tool Sci. It's a cheaper program than Photoshop and it does quite a lot of the same things. It's 60 bucks. And uh, it, I use it to, for painting stuff because it's it's actually, it gets to it gets to the plate where I want it to faster than Photoshop. Photoshop you gotta do a lot of little tricks and things to kind of get everything to look good. But you can kind of like, this one you can kind of move paint around and stuff. Kind of like the way oil paint works a little bit. So. And For this piece, I actually drew the um, drew the actor's face underneath the mask, so you can show, I can show you right here when they turn up all these layers. But I actually drew his face to try to get, because I was having ish difficulties getting the mask to sit right on his face. It just wasn't looking right. So what I did was I just drew his face underneath and then just drew the mask on top. See. There's some obvious, there's, you know, there's some things that are that are a little off on this, which is fine because I'll just adjust it later. This one is kind of meant to be a little, a little on the rough side, kind of like the like the real um, Uncle Sam image. Remember, you notice that he's got a lot of there's a lot of nice little wisps of paint, you know, and then just kind of loosely done here and there. And I kind of want to have that a little bit of that feel in mind. So I really like the I like really like that there's like heavy heavy dark colors in here and stuff like that. It's really cool.
and you can kind of see the energy of the, of the, of the paint and stuff underneath it. I, I really like that stuff. So I'm going to try to retain all of that sort of like a little bit of that sketchiness, but also do a little more, you know, sketchy and then a little clean too. Yeah, Photoshop has this little bit of has a little lag to them, you know, especially when you're using kind of funky brushes. But that's why whenever I use Photoshop to paint, I always actually just I just use whatever the the, the regular brushes are. Some of those fancy brushes just take too much memory to run. It's kind of like if you ever used Painter before. They're a little bit of the, they have because they have all these effects and things that are working in tandem to get them to look the way they look. Plus, I, whenever I use Photoshop, I use an older one. <laughs> I don't use, I have, I'm still using CS5 right now. I haven't been able to, I mean, I'm not a big fan of the Creative Suite anyways. To be honest, I feel like, you know, come on. When you're able to buy a, a copy of Photoshop, that's like your, at least for, for me, I was like, yeah, that's like, you finally did it, you know? Jamin it says honestly if uh, it was up to me it up to uh, it was an option for me to use older PS I would have CS2 which used uh, with uh, no pro which I use with no problem 
I got a Surface Pro Adobe, uh, however, does not optimize their uh, old software for a high def screen. So old versions are teeny tiny on it. It's such a it's such a racket. Yeah, you are right. Granted, my computer is not like super new. Mine is kind of kind of. I got it in 2012, so it's a little old. But it runs good. Was it, it had a terabyte? Oh, did it stop? Here. Some of this is a little bit of a cheat because I'm just using my original sketch underneath. Like usually when I do paint jobs, it's a lot more clean, but I really want the sort of character of the original piece in it. So I'm just going to kind of keep the sketch here and there and paint little bits. So really, oh, one thing I've always liked about this Uncle Sam piece is that it always has this, it has this really great energy to it, you know? You can tell this guy, the guy who painted it was just like, he's just like slap dashing it together. And that's always, I always like, one thing I always like to see, especially with, with artwork is I like to see the hand of the artist in it. I don't like, I mean, you can do super slick, smooth stuff, which looks great too, but I, but I always liked this sort of, like you can see a little bit of the sketch in here and there and, you know, always look, always looks cool to me. That's part of what a lot of the stuff when I, whenever I paint stuff, I don't mind if there's little mistakes and stuff like that, because it gives it, every bit sort of gives it that bit of hand, that handcraftedness to it. Like look like all of this right here. That's such great stuff. But then again, yeah, like he, what he's using on here is just like he's using watercolor or gouache and just kind of slapping it down like you know, and letting it happen. Happy accidents as uh Bob Ross would say, happy accidents.
That's the selection tool. See, where you just kind of blended all that stuff in there really nicely. Photoshop, you would have had to do that. It would taken forever to do that. Just to get that little bit of something to happen. And you can do like some really nice, like, feel it like in here. See, so like that. Such a good stroke. stuff in here like get that uh, If you notice the aspect ratio on this thing, uh, my, my Cintiq is actually a little different. It's an old 21 inch uh, Cintiq. So, using all this old tech. Feel free to ask any questions if you got any.
Yep, it's called the Easy Paint Tool Sai. It's a Japanese program. Uh, another one that's also pretty damn fast is um, um, Clip Studio. It's also pretty good, pretty, pretty good for painting. In fact, I drew some of this in Clip Studio because I, um, because I was uh, using some of the, the the tools that are actually really good in it. Yeah, you can just lay down these really nice strokes. And you can, you know, it blends and stuff like that. You can, like, it automatically blends into whatever it's there because it's just the way the brush settings are set up. And it's, it's, it can run on anything, this thing. I used to run this, this program on, like, a Windows XP system back years ago. There's a new version of it that's actually a lot better. Uh, a friend of mine actually uses it. And he's like, yeah, it's great. Let me pull up my other bit of reference here. It's my hand. I hear all that. Probably gonna be here for a little while painting this thing up, but But it gets to it gets you to that place a lot quicker, you know, when it comes to this sort of stuff. Again, like you know, one, like like I used to oil paint and stuff like that, and that was the one thing that always bugged me about doing digital work is just like there's none of that sort of stuff that happens when you actually paint paint on anything. You don't you don't get you don't get um, like paints that the stuff that naturally blends together it all just kind of just sits on top of each other and really the best thing about paint is that it always it always is mingling and intertwining and that's the stuff that I want I, I, for years I tried to do that in Photoshop and I can do something like that in Photoshop but for this stuff I really want you know, like I really like that feeling of just being able to go and lay down something Now there just needs to be a little, you know, like it's still a little bit, it's still a little bit um, wishy-washy, the, the drawing. You know, it's like it's not solid. So what I'm going to do is later I'm going to, you see a little bit of it. I'm kind of painting on top of it to kind of help it out a little. Like, sure. like some of this stuff over here, I'm, I might want to. 
some of that stuff there. I want to do that. Just help it just a little bit. Mr. Jenkins. This is the actor that actually plays um, Die Hard Man in, in Death Stranding. He had a he had a very high resolution photo of himself on his uh, website, so I decided to, to you know, as a little bit of assistance to myself on this, I downloaded it and tried to get his likeness as close as possible. See? I'm debating whether I should go in and later on paint an alternate, just paint him without the mask on. But uh, for now, it's just going to be this. It's going to be this version. And maybe, maybe later on I'll decide to do that. This is going to be the fun part, let me see. Doing silk, or yeah, doing the silk, because he's got a silk ascot on. And that, I've, I've rarely painted silk. Like that. This is, that's, this is a specific sort of look that I'm looking, that I want to try to capture. Dapper. Yeah. I gave him a little bit of a rim light because uh, I think part of what kind of helps this character is that he always has a. They always they always light him from the sides to kind of make the details of the mask come out. Like here, they kind of lit them from the sides a little bit. I love the way that doing that stuff. That's really nice. Make sure to save. Yeah, it's, um, I don't know. Yeah, it still has this weird sort of thing. It never gets high shines to it. Again, it gets this sort of medium like shine to it.
like it never gets like a super like hot like like shine to it This also has a nice rotate tool. You can kind of rotate it around. I know in some versions of this for Photoshop, it doesn't work so well. He's got a pin on his thing that I didn't fully draw in. I'll probably paint that in. And I mean, I could, you know, do it a little bit wishy-washy, but I kind of want it to be a little more, um, a little, a little more solid looking. In fact, you notice he's got one right here. Yeah, that's a really nice.
There we go. Feels a bit better. See what you guys are saying. I sort of wing it. Um, it's it's rare. Like sometimes I sometimes I have a specific color palette that I want, but I don't often um, set them up too much. I kind of base it off of like what what I'm trying to what what the feel that I'm trying to get from it <coughs> like I want this one that like for this one I'm trying to I want it to be a little warm a lot warm like kind of essentially like the original like the original piece a little bit to sort of feel the same but not to the point where it's like an, an exact mimic of it. Like, I don't want it to be, like, so blue or so... I want it to kind of feel like and it's in the same place, but not exactly. <laughs> it's part of the reason why I got it. I mean, I could have easily just duplicated his hand and all that stuff but I don't really want that because I still want it to feel like it's me doing it just you know <coughs> just it's just it, you know it's the, the same feel as that original piece but not exactly that but I yeah I don't usually I don't I have a certain I don't set color palette so much I kind of have uh, colors that I sort of like, and I just sort of maybe reuse them over again, but it's not really like I, I specifically go out to go to use those colors. Like, there's, I mean, just from like doing comics and stuff, I kind of have this sort of certain palettes that I sort of use over and over again, just because it's a lot quicker to just raid the old things that you did and kind of riff off of them. <laughs>
Alrighty, guys. I think that's it. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Throwdown Draws. Don't forget, tomorrow at the same bat channel, at the same bat time, we will continue to paint Die Hard Man. Also, on Thursdays, 10.30 p.m., don't forget to watch Throwdown. And on every Sunday, we have Throwdown Your Questions at 10.30 p.m. All right. Thanks, guys.